Hey guys, I'm Robert Renman. This lesson has four elements I want to highlight because they're all important and useful. I'm going to teach you a really sweet blues lick that ties in nicely with the specific chord we're playing over. I'll make it very clear how the lick is centered around the chord. It's also a longer lick, about three measures long, and we're using all six strings. This really helps us learn the fretboard better. We follow it up with a catch a little chord fill, which completes the whole idea and makes it four measures in length. We play it to a backing track in all 12 keys, which is a really effective way of learning different keys on the fretboard. Are you ready? Let's do it. Now let me play it real nice and slow for you. Here we go. One and two and three. I think it sounds really cool to follow up the main lick with this little chord fill. Now let's take a closer look at this lick. The first time we play it, we play it over A7. We have the A7 bar chord right here. And I think it's good to relate this lick to this shape, this chord shape. You can see it's kind of happening right there, right? I'm going to play it one more time, really, really slow this time, so that you can easily see what my fingers are doing. So I'm playing D string. Then I play a double stop, G and B strings, and I hammer on with the middle finger on the G string. Then up to this double stop. And back with the hammer on. So it's like playing, it's like playing that A7 and D and back. Little mini chords. Now, why does this lick sound cool? That's a good question. Let's talk about that. There are a couple of reasons. First of all, we are using a lot of the notes from the Mixolydian mode, which is the mode that goes with a dominant seven chord. The Mixolydian mode sounds like this. So we are following that mode pretty closely, but we add in a few extra notes here and there to make it uh, kind of flow better and make more music out of it, so to speak. Let me play the lick again, but this time I'm going to pick harder on the downbeats, on the one, two, three, and four. This way we can easily tell which note I'm playing on the downbeat. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, one and two, and three. So the first three notes, they are what we call pickup notes. They really just there to kind of get us ready for the main lick. Kind of a little warm up for the listener to bring us into the main show here, which is the lick when it starts on beat one. And this is the root note. And beat two, we have that note, which is not a chord tone. It is the uh, sixth or the 13th, depending on how you look at it. And then we have this note, the fourth, which is kind of a weak note. And then we have the minor third here 
on another downbeat. And then we're back on beat one here again on the root note. So it's kind of a lick in its own right. And the second part of the lick, it sounds very similar, doesn't it? Listen to them one more time. And the second. Right? You hear the similarities. And we always end each of those licks on the downbeat. And we're also starting both of them on a downbeat. And that downbeat is a root note. Now, let's look at this lick from a different perspective. In a visual way. I'm going to try and illustrate with my hand here. If we ignore the first pickup notes, which I said they're just there to kind of getting us ready for the party, right? After that, when the real main show starts on beat one, on, with the root note, we have... So, visually, da 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 we're going down i'm not going to even sing in pitch i'm not very good at singing but that really doesn't matter what we're after is the design i'm starting here da 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 going down right da 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 and then i go up da 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 and then i go down again further da and then up da and then finish on the root note da so it looks like this da 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 so the first five notes are just following the scale sequentially and it's not very interesting so in order to make it more melodic we go This note, the fourth, happens on a downbeat, and it's not a strong note, but we go up to a previous note, and then down, and by playing those notes at the end there, we are able to finish on the root note, and it creates a melodic hook, right? What makes that sound good the other notes before are just kind of traveling notes. And again here. So actually, the first four notes of this lick are boring. We're just following the scale, descending. I think that sounds quite boring. But we create some tension by playing the fourth interval on a downbeat and the minor third, and the major third, and brings it home on the root note here. Right? The first part boring. But then... Those two things together makes it for an interesting line. We have a boring part just going down, da 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 da, and then da 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 da. And that works, right? And from here, we do almost the same thing, right? The one thing that's added here in the second part is I'm playing the flat five or sharp four. And that note is not part of the mixolydian. Again, the mixolydian. So in the first part, we have the mixolydian but we have an added minor third. And then the flat five, minor third, major third, and root note. So besides the mixolydian mode, we have two notes that are sort of outside that scope. And that is the minor third, which always works great together with the major third in blues. We have the second note being the flat five, which is part of the blue scale. So if I put my music theory nerd hat on, 
I would say this is the A mixolydian mode combined with the A minor blues scale. Now, let me tell you, and this is very important, if you can start seeing the chord shapes in scales and licks like this, then you're well on your way to become a solid proficient musician. I guarantee it. Take your time and study it closely. I hope you can see how it's all tied to that chord. This whole lick, it's just coming back to that chord over and over. Now, let's have a look at how I take this lick and chord fill and play through all the 12 keys using the circle of fifths. I know what you're thinking. Why on earth should I practice this in all keys? It's kind of difficult. And I only play in maybe three or four keys anyway. Well, I'll give you a few reasons. By doing this, you will start to really know where chords and the corresponding scales are on the fretboard. In fact, you'll start seeing chords and scales much faster. It will also help you when you need to transpose something to a different key. That can happen when you play in a band. Furthermore, if you're wanting to learn jazz at some point, knowing many keys will be very important since jazz tunes often modulate between many key changes. At the same time, knowing your instrument really well will give you a sense of satisfaction as well as confidence. I will admit that I still struggle with some keys, and that's okay. The guitar is a tough instrument to learn. I do want to encourage you to stay with it and don't give up, because it will get easier the more you do this. So there you go. Thanks for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or feedback, fire away in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. And by the way, I have another lesson where I teach how to play easy blues licks in all seven keys, all over the fretboard, using different string combinations. You can watch that lesson right here. Yeah, go ahead, click it. It's up there.